That was fast, sleeping machine. How are you doing? Good morning, Jeremiah Black. Hello, the Cajun one. they work. That's good. Flash 15,000. Welcome. <clears throat> Runs in. I'm here. I I'm present. <laughs> Spamming links on Discord right now, getting a, a plugin set up that was sent to me by Jeremiah Black today. <coughs> Excuse me. Still waking up. UGCI Gaming, how are you doing? What's up, Mushroom? Hey, Royal. My dude. My man. Anyway, let's get started here. How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. We're going to be working on Natural Explorers again, as usual. And we have a plugin sent to me from Jeremiah Black, and this is supposed to fix the face sets or maybe just cause them to refresh more. It's a small plugin, but it will see. Let me download it. Direct download, please, Dropbox. Oh no, it might be a virus. Well, I can see the code exactly, and I don't see anything malicious. So let's go ahead and keep this. And I'm gonna cut this and put it where it needs to be. so much Jeremiah Black let's see if it works we'll go ahead and put this in at the bottom and it starts with NE face set fix doesn't need any help file or parameters or anything it's just a line of code I'll show you guys this is all it does it's creating a variable named face refresh and this is aliasing 
menu status prototype initialize and then we're calling this dot underscore need refresh we're calling the alias function of initialize method with also this dot underscore need refresh so when this is dot refresh is being defined if this needs refresh load images and need refresh turn it off so it's telling it to load images and refresh or load images and turn off the refresh every time that this function method is called right okay so let's test it out let's get in the game and press escape and see if it shows the face images well first we got to see if it runs right I don't think it would cause any problems no it still doesn't do it it was a good try though nice try Very, very good try. Darn it. If you press it again, it'll work because it already loads it. <clears throat> I wonder... I wonder if we make a plugin command, like say inside this plugin. Let me open it with Sublime. Darn it! Okay, sorry. Um, what if we make a plugin command inside here, and then we can call a plugin command to just this dot underscore load images, right? And then, and then upon entering a map, we'll automatically load images. You know, it's like a preloader. This right here, you're saying it's true upon initializing, and then, and then calling. You know, this is this is aliasing that. All of this is aliasing window menu status prototype. But oh, this is on menu status. <clears throat> we need it on scene menu. Is this the same if we go into the classes? How about using the SRD preloader plugin? Last time I tried it broke, but I'm gonna try again. What did I click? What did I click? Did I break stuff? No, we're good. <clears throat> Let's try to do that. Let's get SRD's preloader. SRD RPG Maker MV preloader. I liked this one before and I remember praising it and then it stopped working. And I'm like, well shit. See if this works with uh, the newest version. Keep it. Okay. Let's cut this. I think I already have it open. Plugins. Hostage. Audio, preload system, faces, important, yes, important. No, all. Just set the faces to all, because that's like sort of what we're using this for. 
Let's see how long it takes at the beginning of the game. If it even runs. Okay, game upgrade plugin is required to use that. Yes, please. You gotta admire that kind of inner interactivity. It's not just doesn't work crash. It's like, hey, you actually need this plugin. And then you're like, okay, let me go get it. <clears throat> and then the plugin's like, do you want me to take you there? Because I know you're lazy. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Take me there. And I would like to put it Okay, since this is a requirement of it, I should put it above it. Game upgrade, huh? Hopefully it's compatible. Oh no, it's not gonna work with the... Uh... It's gonna change the resolution and stuff, isn't it? I'm just gonna leave it default and see what happens. Put Preloader Core underneath it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, package.json has been updated. Restart the game to see the changes. Oh gosh. Hey, look at that. Not only does it work, but it works. I need a battle background here. <clears throat> I'm a little worried about what package.json update did. What I'm gonna do is test play my game before I do anything else, because I may need to make some changes or something. Um, let's go ahead and change the system back to the placeholder dude, starting placeholder. Start transparent, go to our start screen. Make sure everything's running correctly. Oh no. It changed the, it like squished the image. Oh no, it changed it. It squished the image. It's not what I wanted it to do. Uh, hold on, if I just turn it off, does it does it not do those things? Or do I, did I do a boo-boo? Okay, so it seems to, you see how it's like, what, it's more 16 by nine? I can just, I can, I can fix that. I can fix that. Just take the 1104 by 624. 624. Game resolution, screen resolution, minimum resolution, maximum resolution. Is T my sister? No, she's my wife. He committed. We has the marriage. We caught the marriage. <laughs> okay, so far this looks good. 
I need help in chapter finding a rem remainder in JavaScript. Please tell. Remainder. Use modulus. Snow, snow, snow. Use modulus, Ekuman. The percent sign. You know, like. Like as an as an operator. As an operator. Yeah. Okay, so far so good. Escape. The faces are loading. The faces are loading. I'm not understanding the question. Um, well, ask us the question and we'll help you understand it. What is your question? Don't worry, Devin. We're coming to save you. How you make an enemy appear like that with the lightning effect you made, Flash? Devin. Oh my god, thank you for rescuing me. I was scared because of reasons I will not explain. I'm going to build a tinker shop inside the town. I'll be waiting in town. You obtain Tinker's kit and unlock crafting. That's using uh, Mr. T's Emerge Animation plugin. And then it's just a custom animation that I. You can pick any animation you want. It's pretty so far, so good. I'm loving this. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I will show you, Flash. Just give me a minute. I'm, I'm doing like, I'm waiting for something to crash and be like, oh, some reason or another, it just doesn't work. Right. Oh man. Our hay scribbles. We have so many good sprites. We made some good sprites, for sure. I'm totally keeping them with the final release too. Like all of these half-baked scribbles. Totally using them. Guys, I think I think this is gonna work. SRD preloader core to to the rescue. Red Phoenix with the million dollar super chat. Thank you so much, Red. Appreciate it, man. How are you doing today? Construct a mine? Clink. Yes, please. One McChicken sandwich from McD. <laughs> yes. Search for Mr. T, Mr. Tribbles, um, Emerge Animation Plugin. This is our custom combat. You know, everything's working fine. I haven't seen any problems with the Preloader Core yet. And it does fix, fixed, does fix the face graphics. Oh my gosh. And it doesn't add too much load time. It's like that, right? Well, I'm sure slower computers might take a little bit longer. Does all this work? Oh, I need to add a show text that causes the player to, yeah, stop that from like auto repeating real quick. On the option that shows 
OK button is pressed off the end. You do the show text and wait 10 frames and then show text. And then we need to look at the plugin help for message core and do the thing that makes the player input a release. Backslash exclamation point for wait for button input. So we have to do this. But I want to see if that looks too jank or not. No, nope, don't open, just save. What if I just hold enter? Is it going to just restart? Because I want to avoid that. It does. The player's going to be holding enter and they're like, oh. That doesn't really help. It just makes it look more jank. What if I put that exclamation point at the end of the scrolling text? Huh? 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 I don't know. I, I, why did I do that? I don't know. Just delete that. Hey. Edit this. Go to the bottom. And then just go like slash exclamation. Dun, 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 dun. Or maybe increase the the weight now because then they're gonna spam it. And that's that's not maybe get rid of the weight. Cause the player's gonna go, oh uh oh. Hold enter, right? See and then and it's just gonna start again. That actually doesn't do anything here. What I can do is at the beginning of uh, this right here, it's gonna auto run and race, show picture, and this is, has, has already happened, so it won't do it when we come back. Hello, Mr. Stutters, welcome to the party. And these are all parallels. I can't put a weight in here while it's checking. What I can do is this. All right, I have it. I got an idea. Um, we can we can get rid of this. It happens too fast. So let's put a little bit of a weight there. That's a little bit better. In, in fact, I'm going to just give it one second. One second. Okay, and then I'm going to show you the other thing that you asked about real quick. Okay. How do you do the enemy emerge thing? All you have to do is install the plugin, and then you, you put in a note tag on side the enemies, or inside the enemy's note box called appear animation and then you put in the number and then the number of frames you want it to wait you don't really need to have any additional weight I put one frame so or what animation for, oh this is the second thing is the frame you want the animation to start playing right so let's look at the plugin real quick mr. T's emerge animation just google that RPG maker MV plugin Mr. T's Emerge Animations and find it, get the most recent version. And you're gonna copy this example here, paste that in your enemies, that's basically it. This first one is the animation number you wanna use and the second one is what frame do you want the animation to play on? Visible frame. In which animation frame enemy becomes visible? <clears throat> So I'm choosing animation 201 and the enemy's visible on the first frame. Just like make them show up quick and easy. You can change the numbers, change the animations. 203, as you saw in the game, is lightning one. That was the... Did 
actually get rid of the last frame on that. And two last two frames. Yep. Okay. You missed the war? It was it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before yesterday. And it was crazy. I had seventy-five dollars in super chats. Blueones.com says, Whoa, how did you make the game the background? I'm using the plugin that skips the background. So I'm using Yami's skip title plugin, and then it just doesn't go to the title scene at all unless you end game or game over, which we fixed by going into the code itself. Um, you'll have to do a couple things if you want to fully do this. So you just start the player on, you know, you just start the player on this map. Start location, start transparent, and then I'm just making a, there's a whole episode or two episodes about making the start menu. But a couple of things that are very hard to figure out is how to make it so that it goes back to this scene when you game over, and how do you make it so that it goes back to this scene when you press the end game and not like the, the default one. So to fix that, game open folder, I put a record of it so that I can reference this when I'm asked or when I have to think about it in the future. So you're gonna go to your RPG scenes.js and you're gonna change <clears throat> line 1830 and line 2690 to do this. You're going to replace this with this. And I can show you real quick. Wait, was that it? In scenes? So you're going to go here on game end. I can zoom in a little bit for you. Where it, it would normally say scene manager dot go to scene title. We're skipping scene title. So I commented that out with two slashes and I put in data manager set up new game function and then scene manager push the scene map. So it starts the player as a new game and it pushes them to the map It like teleports them. So instead of starting you know, like the new continue exit game or whatever new continue options uh, of the default box, it skips that. And that's for when you press end game, that fixes it so end game takes you to here instead of like the actual scene title. And uh, one other change is on line 2690. Let's scroll down and get 2690. literally the last part of this um, code it also has when you say go to title whenever go to title is um, called for like when you game over or you end game it's pushing scene title it's going to scene title which we're commenting out because we don't want that anymore we have our own new title screen so we just put that same code data manager dot set up a new game scene manager dot push scene map and we do this so that it restarts all of the uh, sets all everything to zero and starts over again without actually, otherwise it's just like a transfer event and then it's not really starting a new game, so you need to do this. And that's it, and that'll fix it so that you have your custom map as your, your starting screen. And then you just parallax background that, right? Go to edit and you put in whatever image you want for the background. And you can draw pictures on top of it. I'm drawing uh, an arrow right here, animated arrows with uh, the controllers are an auto run event that puts the player or puts th this arrow activated and using an array like a variable to 
uh, not really an area, I'm just using a variable and switches to, to toggle if I'm pressing up or down, and I'm doing conditional branches to see if, if I'm pressing up or down. We can't use if is button press because it just zooms through every frame, but you can just type in the same thing, but instead of is pressed, you use is triggered, and then you can just type in down or up. We make a condition for if we press up on this spot, what happens? If you press down on this spot, what happens? And then if you press OK on that spot, what happens? And you do that for every option you want. And it's really easy, simple. Custom menu. Drifty, can you change the preload images? Yeah, I can. It's in the, it's in SRD's plugin. Has Drifty noticed the Regal Rangers in Art Museum? <laughs> That's cool. Broccoli. A little mushy. That's cute. Well, they're working now. <clears throat> um. By they, I mean the main one, the game upgrade, and the preloader core. I'm sure you'll run into errors with compatibility. All plugins will at some point. But um, for what I have, which is quite a few Yanfly plugins, um, a Mr. T plugin, Olivia's plugin for her battle system, Tarax lighting, and, and the simple skip title screen plugin, everything's working with game upgrade and preloader core so far. How do I stream? Um, I wake up at night. Um, I make coffee. Sometimes I make a breakfast sandwich. Ooh, it's cold though. It's wonderful. I use OBS. I'm just joking. I use OBS right here. I make scenes. And then I put like different things in like so that if I want to start the stream I can go like this and be like oh the stream will start shortly and then I can just like do other stuff hide my screen and put your logo up webcam all this other stuff the banner at the top you can resize everything with OBS OBS is really good you can control your mic audio and your desktop audio levels. Usually the desktop's a lot louder than the microphone, so you wanna crank your mic and put your desktop pretty low. And do lots of sound tests, like do local recordings, and then uh, listen back in your headphones, see how it goes. Uh, and then you gotta go to settings and put in your stream key, set it all up with YouTube and or Twitch, and it's literally like you press start streaming and you're live in like five seconds. Um, I use 3800 bit rate for streaming. And then when I do local recordings, if I remember to change it, which I never do, um, I use like 10,000 bit rate. And you can use NVIDIA encoder for local recordings, but it doesn't work very well for streaming. Just use the X286 or whatever it is, 280, 264, whatever the number one is. <clears throat> I don't like Bandicam, but if you like it, go for it. Yeah, it, it's very CPU intensive. It for sure is. Let me see if I have this up. Uh, yeah. 
I keep this up pretty much all the time. OBS takes up a little bit of your GPU and a little bit of your CPU. <clears throat> Depending on how good of a CPU you have and if you what um, encoding method you're using, it'll use more CPU and more GPU. But it doesn't hog your resources. And you can see that it's constantly taking up your as you're streaming, you're sending about four megabit per second. If you're using 3800, it'll take you know, 3.8 megabit per second. So just keep an eye uh, on your system resources and um, on your bit rate and get your settings right and you should have no problem. If you have any questions, I'll, you know, I'll try to answer them for you. Also, you can join the Discord, links in the description below, where you can talk to 200 plus other people who are usually online and there's a lot of knowledgeable, talented people there. Okay. That's the start menu, that's the Emerge Animations. We've got a, we, got, we fixed the bug then, right? With the preloader core. I don't really need to load all of the tile sets. I can change that, is that what you're mentioning? Background musics. Load important tile sets. Which ones are marked? How do you tell when they're important? Which is my favorite Regal Ranger? Uh, I don't know, Mushri. So it's only loading the tile sets, some tile sets, some music effects, some background musics, all the faces. That's fine, right? It loads it once, and that's it. sets and, and it does the job I, I, I wasn't having any issues with uh, it does change the the upgrade plugin is what's doing that it's changing the icon which I'm okay with that's fine test the Easter egg where we change the, the face set with an item to see if it updates like it's supposed to. Perfect. Okay. Use. It works. Item. It works. Thank you, Robert. bug. <clears throat> there were some teleport bugs in the graveyard. What is the sound effect again? I've made many of them customized. <coughs> Excuse me. And Audacity with my face hole. And I just recorded them and then processed the audio and put them in the game. So let's test our some of our teleport events. I gotta zoom out a lot here.
So what I'm going to do... <clears throat> so go to system, turn off the start transparent, and start me with, uh, we'll say Battle Toaster. Let's start testing transfer rinse. Make sure that when I, I go in a door, I come out that same door. You know what? I could probably get rid of loading any of the tile sets and just straight up load the base sets. See the lighting? Tracks lighting? It's super cool. You get that shading. I mean, it's essentially the same brightness, but it's not all the same brightness, right? Okay, so there's a, there it is. I knew it. Um, this one is taking us to Crypt 1. Let's go into Crypt 1. Edit this. And say, take us to The graveyard. Mm, the, the graveyard. Put us back right here. And make us face down. And then I can copy this, delete the other one, paste it, and save some time. Can you advertise me? Mm -hmm. It depends. I mean, usually I'd be like, you know, like, I would think yes, sure, but I don't want to be associated with anything negative or like copyrighted or that works fine, both of the teleports. Moving on, moving on, let's change the preloader so that it doesn't load anything but bases, because that's what I actually needed it to do. Background musics, um, no, you don't really have to, you don't have to load any of those. Music effects, you don't have to load any of those. Um, tile sets, you really don't need to load any of those. But I like having the option, that's cool. Um, it does load the faces like I needed it to, so that's good. Let's go back to the graveyard and move to another crypt. This one, what about right here? Where does this take us? Crypt 9? Wait a minute. You can get there by going, jumping the fence, going up here, going up there, 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 there. And then, how do you get in, in there? Walking from here. Oh, okay, you walk up and you just go like this and boom. So I don't want this to be Crypt 9. This is going to be Crypt 2. Crypt 2. Alright, where's Crypt 9? Let's change, or let, where's Crypt 2? Let's change that to 9. This is 6. Can't we find event somehow? Like, we, this search for event name Crypt 2. Or, yeah, 2. Search. Does it, does it not show? Search. What? X underscore crypt. Okay. Let's try that. X underscore crypt. All of them. What? Okay, what about X underscore crypt 2? Found two of them. This one. This is two. This is now nine. 
Pop the fence, you just go right over there. So inside of Crypt 2, we need to check these teleporters. Yeah, that's not the right one. Go to Crypt. To actually go to Graveyard. And put them out there. Move on up. Let me copy that. Delete the other one and paste it. Let me test it. Super fast loads, it's just loading base sets. Oops. Fail to load undefined. OGG. Excuse me. <laughs> Does, do I have to have this set as important to not get that? super fast yeah that's what we do whatever I'll work with that so I have to activate a switch somewhere that opens Does this have to be in a move event? <clears throat> Why is this in a move event? Oh! I know why it's in a move event. You can just copy this code. You don't have to specify the, the number of the ID. I get it. It's easy because you select the target here. So we're saying with Crypt 4, make that self switch turn off or on. So the movement route saves you from changing the code from copy pastage. makes it easy, right? The undefined.ogg flash? Yeah. I got it by turning off the preload BGM from importance to none, and then I got an error. I'll just put it back on important and it seems to be fine. I don't mind the split second extra load time that was required by doing this to fix the bug, I'm okay with that compromise. It doesn't really matter. Go to what I'm working on. You made some music? That's cool, Yoshi. Hey, Chaos Theory.
right, so I have to change one of these events that opens the gate here. One of these events. Here's Crypt 9. Here's Crypt 2 opener, which has been changed to Crypt 9. So what I need to do to switch it is just go back here and change it to Crypt 2. Now it's still Crypt 2 opener. But I have to find the other one that's Crypt 2 opener. Or that's Crypt 9 opener that tries to open Crypt 2. So there's one more of those that I have to change because I swapped them. I don't know why I did that. I suppose just to learn how this is all operating. Here it is. Crypt 9 opener is trying to open Crypt 2. We're going to change this target to Crypt 9. Now everything is hunky dory again. I really appreciate Prize History's uh, attention to detail, not only in mapping, but in the fact that he slash the she knew that I would not be able to use this entire tied up system if there were variables or switches tied to it because I'm already using those and it would be a lot of work to change it. But instead, using the movement route to call a script that changes the self switch on other events would be very copy pasteable. So I really appreciate that, Christ History. And that was very clever and intuitive of you. Transfer player to Crypt 9. We need to test this one now. Inside of Crypt 9, we need to make this take us to the right spot. This one? No. I put the starting position there. Okay. So we're looking at transferring to 99106. I wish when you're selecting right here, it shows like the position that you've selected right here. Why does it not show the position? That could be an update to the engine. You know what the biggest problem with this engine is? <clears throat> it doesn't allow for plugins to modify the engine itself. Why not? Why not? You know how many cool add-ons you'd be able to use? I know why. I think. Because they planned on monetizing engine upgrades, right? But the thing is, the limited amount of resources they threw at that would just be dwarfed in comparison to the amount of resources the whole community can throw at that task. So I think it was, I mean, I don't completely blame them, it's their software and they're trying to make money on it. But man, you really threw a wrench in your own machine by doing that because you limited us to use all of the, only what you decide should be in the engine. When I know we would have tons of coders making new buttons that just load, change, you know, modifications so that we could have new things here when we do drop down, new quick start things, um, new auto generation, just all kinds of crazy things. Like, can't even imagine what a group of 10,000 people would imagine. Huh? Side tangent over. Wait, did I copy that one? No, I need to 
delete this one, copy this and put it here so that these are the same. And this should put us right outside there. seeing a battle background there. I need to find a battle background or make one. This will be a placeholder. I don't care. It's going to be pretty awful, but it'll be something. Crazy. Omni slash, what are we talking about? Who pulled the Bethesda? <clears throat> oh, I'm talking about what I was talking about was how Katakawa built their engine and made it so restrictive that nobody can change anything. Like, you cannot change the engine whatsoever. You can only add plugins that change the executable, the game. And I'm saying, like, can you imagine what the community could have done with the engine had they been able to make plugins that affect the engine? Like, essentially, make buttons new buttons, right? Like, put up new buttons. Make it so that when you right click, you can do quick event creation for other things for like uh, new starting things. I don't know about starting position, but whatever. Um, I'm just talking about what the possibilities were for, for the engine had it been more open source, not like 
free to copy, paste, and share. Like, obviously, I don't want it pirated, but I wanted it to be able to be modified. But it's so locked and, and unable to be modified um, at all. And, at all. Like, so the only thing you can change is what changes they monetize, right? The, the second thing or the other features that they create. You know, they locked it for that reason, I imagine. But there's so many missing things from, you go to new and you go to contents, right? You've got three tabs. You know that there's already like codes for a whole other tab of things. Like you can have like 10, 20 other functions that are already defined and built into the game, zoom options, that are just, there's no button for them. If you don't know how to script, you can't even use them. So I'm just, what I was talking about, OmniSlash, was it would have been cool, and I think it was a huge missed opportunity that plugins can't affect the engine. There, there's also lots of oversight in it because people can fix things like giving more options on timer control, giving more options for when you go to conditional branches, right? There should be like five more tabs of things that you can just automatically click you know, otherwise you just gotta do script calls. Like for example, right here, when you do button, is button, it's using is press, right? It's calling the is press method, which is checking every frame, which is good for some things, but terrible for other things, like making a menu. So you'd have to type in uh, input and, and type use is triggered or is released. It would be cool if they had another drop down menu right here that says is pressed down, and then you click it and it's a drop down menu that says is triggered. You know, and then the next thing is released, etc. Like all of those cool features that could have been added in the engine, but never got added to the engine. That's what I was talking about. And somebody said they pulled the Bethesda. I don't know about that. That's not exactly what I'm saying. And then I got tired of seeing the same background because uh, I didn't put a background, so I was like, whatever, this is gonna look really bad. However, um, I, it'll be a custom background at least. For now. Export that as a PNG. Beautiful. Wow, beautiful. I love it. And then we will file manage some stuff here. Copy this and put this into Natural Explorers. IMG. Battle back. And then on the graveyard where we have our auto runs, we just change one more thing. This is the auto run erase, so it's gonna do stuff. And we'll go new, change battle back. To our attempt one. So now, as I'm walking around, testing things here, testing teleporters, transfer events, and we get into a battle, we won't see. Terrible battle background. Or we won't see a lack of a battle background. There it is. Okay. 
Is that a dead end here? I'm gonna change the encounter rate. You literally have to go in. Yeah, I don't like that encounter right now. So it's easy to change. With our custom battle system. Pseudo random battle. So we're controlling the variable every time this is called, which is when we step on a, a, a region. And we're adding four to five. I'm going to add two to three. And then we'll make the the battle warning more like a 180. So every time we step on a tile, it's going to add two to three. It's going to pick a two or a three and add it to that variable. And then when that variable gets to 180, it's going to start showing an icon above our head. See that? And if it's in between 180 and 200, it'll show the icon. But when the, the counter gets to 200 or higher, it starts a battle. And then it picks a random number to see what we actually get into a fight with. And then after the fight, depending on if we win, lose, or escape, different things happen. If you win, you get a Necronite and the counter gets reset. If you escape, the counter gets reset. If you die, or if you lose, it doesn't game over. It just takes you back to your house and the witch takes 10% of your max gold and the counter gets reset. Feels a little better. And the Necronite can be used to purchase things that I haven't actually set up yet. So there's a shop that's going to require that currency. That's why you'd want to fight in here instead of like in the dungeon. It still feels a little bit like kind of grindy walking through the graveyard. The graveyard's huge. I'm going to lower it. I'm going to say one to two. Give the player a lot of steps. Players walking, control the variable, and add one to two. And then if it gets between 190 and 200, give the player like the last minute. So five to 10 steps will give you a warning. You're about to get into a battle within the next five or, step, five or 10 steps. Faces. 
That feels much better. It took a long time to get into a, a battle. But the player, even if they have to backtrack, like, it's not that big a deal. Get into one little fight. And then they have all this time to move around. This is how you handle the random encounters without... You'll never get into a fight, like, a few steps after you get out of battle. Because it resets the counter and it's got to add up to 200 again. So unless you're trying to grind fights, this is a perfect system. Give you lots of steps between battles. So what I should also incorporate is a place where the player can quickly start battles. Boom, 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 boom. If they're trying to grind and they just want to fight. So we'll, we'll incorporate some sort of that arena system type thing. What's going on? What is this LSD simulator music? Is it too loud? Or was that the last track? Hey, thanks, gaming Luneman. Thank you, Pixel. Chainer says, all I use is GIMP, and it still gives me a hard time. I don't like GIMP. I mean, GIMP is great. <laughs> chill, chill, chill. GIMP is amazing. It does a lot of things, but I like Photoshop. A question to the chat. What do you prefer? Harem RPG visual novel or reverse harem RPG visual novel? First harem simulator right there. Dream Daddy. <laughs> Dream Daddy. Oh man, have you seen Dream Daddy? The game's great. Yeah, Doc Bees, that's what I was um, thinking about. Just make some sort of arena, like, where they can just start a fight when they want to. Rin says, have them check a gravestone and 50-50 start a battle. That's an idea. Hey. How about an item that puts a state on a player to increase the number of steps variable faster? an idea too. I don't know about an equipment though. 
I, I like the idea of using the equipment, but mechanically it's hard to do in the game. Because I, then I have to check three characters. Does this actor have it on? Does this actor, actor have it on? Does this actor have it on? And if so, um, add this much, this much, this much. Otherwise, else, like, it's actually not that hard now that I think about it. Okay. We can do that. Let's test this system. But I need to get the code. It will be a conditional branch with a script call at this point. We would do a new conditional branch. Script call, um, what is it? Game data or game actors dot actor number dot equips something something and then you have to select the um, the spot. I don't know the code. Let's, let me see if I can find the code quickly and if I can we'll go with it. If not I'll just uh, find another way. Just make an event on, I can copy paste on the graveyards or something. Let me go to. Where did I put it? It's over here. Um, game equipped or something. We're not actually going to change equipment, but I want to look over here. Data armors that armor ID. Can we reference game party or game actors dot actor the number dot is equipped? Does that have is that a, a method or has equipped? And then we would reference data armors armor ID number but that's that's for gain item how many items it'd be different than this we're making a conditional that's checking what the actor's wearing this is a good idea this is a good thing to figure out not just for this uh, but for other things as well you can do a lot if you figure this out and it shouldn't be that hard you just got to figure out the syntax Look for in the game actors dot actor number what that actor is wearing. Is that built in? That may be built in. The party has this armor. The problem with this uh, function is it's going to see if it's in the inventory, and then if the player even owns the thing it's going to just trigger super battles every time. What we're specifically trying to check is if the player has it equipped, not has it. Character, no, actor. If the actor is wearing, is this, is this it right here? If the actor is wearing something, right? As equipped it's built in why have I never used this this is so cool okay if the actor it has this equipped and we can check all the characters as well let's copy this paste this and paste this we would just need one of these for every actor the player is going to be able to have. So essentially, the max number of actors. We'll start with three. We'll say Edmund, we'll say Mars, and we'll say Battle Toaster. And we'll also check Jinx. We'll start with four Jinx. And let's make the item 17. What is armor 17? Armor 17 is going to be the soul taunter. Yep, exactly, soul taunter.
and it, it provokes spirits in the graveyard to attack the party. And it will be cannot sell and it will have a price of something really high just to make the player be like, oh, if I could just sell it. <laughs> nah, it'll be worth 10,000. It'll show 5,000, but you cannot sell it. Armor type generic equipment will be relic. You'll have to get the soul stone for that. And it'll do nothing else. It'll do nothing else. It's just gonna provoke spirits in the graveyard to attack the party. So if any of the party members has the Soul Taunter equipped, then we're going to control a variable and add more to it. Right? We can make it a higher number. We can make it a set number, even. We'll say four to five. Maybe we'll just make it 10. And then we'll change this back to 180 for the instance that that happens, that we're actually using it. It gives us a little bit of a more warning. More warning is better than, than not enough warning. So from the start, without any soul taunter, you'll have to walk around from anywhere from 100 to 200 steps to get into a battle. So on average, 150 steps to start a battle. That seems good, that seems plenty. But if they have a Soul Taunter on, it would be five to seven. So what is, 28 steps. Um, 200 divided by 5, you got 40. So anywhere from 28 to 40 steps. Which if you're trying to grind, that's not enough. Let's go anywhere from 8 to 10. Right? We can just copy this. Paste this. Paste this. Paste this. Delete this. Delete this. Delete this. So if you walk around, you've got 9 to 12 with, with one of them on. So 9, oh no, 200 divided by 12, 16 steps, and 16 to 22 steps. Because you can have multiple on, right? So say you had two of them on, it would be 16, 17. 200 divided by 17, you're looking at 11 steps if you have two characters with a soul taunter on. And at, at maximum. And then minimum steps, you'd have 22. So you'd have 200 divided by 22, nine steps. That seems, and if you had three characters with it on, you're looking at 24, 25. So 200 divided by 25 is eight. Eight steps, and then you have 32, so you have 200 divided by 32, six to eight steps. And if you had a full party, four people with the Soul Taunter on, you would have 42, so you'd have 200 divided by 42, every five steps, five to six steps. That's, that's probably gonna work, okay. And it will be too much. Let's start the battle toaster. With the soul taunter. And make sure this works as intended. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 
it's adding 9 to 12 per step so yep and that feels pretty grindy 20 steps to a battle that feels pretty grindy And counting steps. One, two, normal encounter rate. Okay, I'm exploring, I'm walking around. I'm not necessarily looking for a fight. It's like, okay, where do I go? Um, what's over here? What's this thing? Can't get in there. Let's go up over here. Is, is there anything right here? No. What about right there? What about this guy? What is this exclamation? I got an exclamation. It's popping up for about a bunch of times. Okay, about eight times. And then a battle. And then I just get out of the battle. And then I have free exploration again. See, that's good. That doesn't feel oppressive. You know, that's really good. It's, there's a clean battle system. Or a clean encounter system, I should say. You can walk around the graveyard and explore without much of a like grindiness to it. But there are battles. You will get into battles. Just run away, though. You set that counter. You don't get Necronite for running away, though. So if you're trying to grind... For that gear, you're like, okay, um, I need to get a hundred Necronites because this is like an ultimate weapon for Toasty, my toaster. Not Toasty. Toasty is another character in real life uh, situation. Toasty's a good guy. Go follow him. On uh, go subscribe to his channel. Subscribe to Toasty, guys. He's really cool. He's he's a young kid and he's up and coming and he's gonna do a lot of great things. I know it. That was weird. That was pretty fast, but that's probably because we're having this, we have the Soul Tantra on, and it's adding like 10, so that's what it was. We just put the Soul Tantra on, now we're grinding, and it immediately felt like, whoa, I'm in battles a lot. I double missed, though. And we want to, we want to grind, because we're trying to get those, those Necronites. Boom, you get that. Rest of 7, 8, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19, something like that. Nice and grindy. We're trying to get Necronite now, right? We're trying to smash. We're trying to get that smash. And we just like walk back and forth. That's the way. We're, we're taunting the souls to attack us to extract Necronite for that reason. Alright. It feels good. I like that system. And um, that was a great idea. That was a great idea. Graveyard enemies, skeletons, and zomzoms? -zoms? Yeah, we should totally do that. So I like both of your guys' idea, Rain and Doc. And we we kind of went with the with Doc's idea for that.
how do you create an item that modifies encounter rate, repel, and attract? Now there's, uh, to make an item that works in the graveyard, we do the opposite, right? We make a conditional statement before we add anything, and it'll say if this, um, we use a, an item that will count the number of steps we've taken, and it turns on a switch first, starts counting steps. When the steps are up, uh, it also creates a parallel process which checks this, you know, if this variable number of steps is at this point. And if it is, you turn off the switch, which um, changes the variable. So we can make a repel potion type thing um, for this combat system and for the basic con because you get, uh, combat system encounter system because you can disable random encounters with with a, a script call or even in the event editor. I hate it when it jumps me straight down because I'm like trying to not lose my place. I'm behind in chat, but I'm trying to catch up. Don't make it a gear, make it a potion that adds a state. You mean for the repel or the soul taunt? I like it being like a, a gem or not a gem, but like a a relic, you know, I like it being like an artifact that's taunting the souls, whatever. Hey, Silver Starlight, sorry I missed you come in. I'm trying to catch up. I'm gonna catch up on chat real quick. Um, answering questions and whatnot. Been back three weeks. Yeah, it's gonna be cool on the seventh. Also, Betrayal starts on the seventh. Yeah, the new Path of Exile League. <laughs> Dream Daddy, yep. You're not gonna make a Dream Daddy? Why not? do it like a uh, potion doc wheeze we can make the repel the item that adds a state that does that if the player is under the state i more or less wanted to um just mess around with a conditional statement that checks to see if the player has something equipped and if they do do something based on that Who do I have to ban? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> T, everybody's cool. Mushri's always the troublemaker, but don't ban him. We need him. We need Mushri. Every we need to have a troublemaker. Can you make a choose difficulty setting when entering the graveyard? We could, Jeremiah, but then that would lead us to make multiple um, instances of fights, right? We would have to make a copy paste of our entire database of enemies and then make the lower stat version or incorporate enemy levels for that specific thing, which I don't know if I want to do. I want to make the game kind of just like uh, not too hard and it's like one difficulty fits all. And the things that are going to be very challenging will be optional. Like, if it's going to be very hard, I'm not going to force the player through it. Because it, it's a game, ultimately, and it needs to be fun.
Doc Wheeze. Don't make it a gear. Make it a potion. No, I want it to be a gear. That's uh, it's the reason why I was doing the entire thing. I was like, how do we do this, right? It, the idea of making it require a piece of armor being equipped was the whole thing that made me want to make it happen so that I can see if I could do that. It, making it an item that makes a state has been like a rehash thing I've done over and over. I'm trying to just challenge myself, I guess, which that wasn't challenging at all, but I didn't think it would be that easy, right? I didn't realize that that was built in, which I should have known. I'm sure I've made a tutorial on that specific thing. In fact, I did do a tutorial on that specific thing. Go look for my how to make set items. Never mind. But I forget, right? He's in his zone, he won't see us soon enough. Yeah, that's true, I'm catching up now. I'm catching up now. Uh, Tease Jam will spare us <laughs> if I do slurp sounds. Have you two been causing trouble for Heartless while I've been out? Silver Starlight asks probably about Mushri and another. Heartless hasn't been around for the past two streams. She's usually here every stream, but the past two or three streams, I hope everything's okay with her. She did pop in, but it was like very quick. Um, the day before yesterday. <laughs> You're on probation? Yeah, if you have an at Mushri and your name is Mushri, it's going to show as a different color to get your attention. It's just like if somebody adds you and it doesn't matter what your name is, if you if you get added, it'll like highlight it. So if you really need me to see it, um, at Driftwood Gaming on your text and it'll like highlight it for me. Um, I was missing a lot, Flash. I'm, I've caught up, though. I've caught up. Pretty much. We're, we're catching up. We're catching up. Uh, I had to make the mechanics work and then do the testing to see that it was good. Bot calling the kettle black. That's just the game I'm making this time, says Doc. Dream Daddy? You're making Dream Daddy? That's awesome, dude. <laughs> Gosh, it's so hard to catch up. Yeah, I'll check out your music track, Mushri, for sure. Maybe have a poison swamp and have the moccasins equipped to negate poison damage? Yeah, that's like a classic thing, right? have damage tiles and then you, if you have something equipped you're immune to those damage tiles you can just call a common event when you walk on that and have it deal damage to the party um, unless if you have uh, something equipped you can you can make a condition if party has this equipped then do nothing else damage the party do it the same way mechanically it should be easy Yanfly's difficulty slider oh we made that plugin huh Hold on, let me let me look for this. Gameplay has so many plugins, it's awesome. Difficulty slider. <laughs> How did I miss this? I probably watched it. I think I did watch it. Wait, let me see if I watched it, because it should be thumbs up. Nope, I didn't. I 
I usually watch every one of the end life videos. I don't know how I missed it. It looks pretty simple, right? Just plug and play. Take a look at it. I have it downloaded. Obviously, I um, I definitely checked it out because I have the plugin. I'm not using it, but we'll get the most recent version. I'm not using it at the moment. It's not actually in the, the plugin list. Is it an extension? It is. Under enemy levels. Oh, okay, so you have to use the enemy levels plugin. That's why I'm not using it in this one. I used enemy levels in my last one, and I like that plugin. It's great. But I want to try to handcraft all of the, the curb. Using a, just a very basic, um, everything goes up in a series of 10, and the player specifically goes up based on um, almost 10, but like if you, if the player goes up in 5 in one skill, they'll essentially go up like in 15 in another, uh, I say skill, but I mean stat. Right. So I'd have to use enemy levels plugin and then the extension for the difficulty slider for it to, to work. I don't want to do that, but that is very cool. Very, very cool. This doesn't help me catch up. <laughs> you can make it so your graveyard monsters can change their form and levels depending on the character's level, like a conditional branch in the monsters log. I could. Yeah, Moosri, I'll check your music out after the stream. We should start calling Drift Papa Drift. Spam is important, right? I guess. Listen to it on the stream so everyone can hear it. Well, what if I don't want to do that? How about you live stream and listen to it? So that everyone can listen to you. Why is the stream so quiet? You can't hear anything in the stream? I don't really want the music to be loud, to be honest. This sort of content doesn't even require music. It's more of a, I'm slowly going to work on my project over here, and hopefully you enjoy working on your project at the same time, and you can tune in if I say something interesting, or start talking about something you can interact. It's not really here to be your radio station. How do you create a skill point allocation? For example, my character gains a level and they gain a skill point. I can choose to allocate that SP to a skill to learn it or power it up. Multiple ways. There's a plugin for that, Ahmed. <clears throat> Let me type in RPG Maker MV Plugin Master List and then followed by um, Level Up Common Event. So Hemiaworks has a level up event plugin, and let's see, I miss Hemiaworks. I used to back Hemiaworks on Patreon at a, like a decent level, but I haven't heard from him or her in a while. I may still back Hemia. Do I still back Hemia? Hold on. No, because like kind of dropped off. But that doesn't mean, I don't know. I'm still backing Akashix, SRD, even though he's kind of gone too. I, I expect a return from SRD, so that's why I'm still backing him. Galv, Arkea, Yanfly, T, White Dragon, and Neo Soul Gamer. Those are the people I back on Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, I have a Patreon if you'd like to back me. Patreon.com slash Driftwoodgaming. Thank you so much. You don't have to, but it is there to show your support. Now, I'm looking for a plugin. Sukihime has it. Hime works. Um, let's just go to the link here. Download available at hemiworks.com. Okay, let me. I'm gonna throw this link at you. It's probably a little behind the chat. 
Ahmed, check this one out. You can use this, and essentially you co the common event you choose is to add one to a variable and then make another system like an item or a button that's pressed that calls a, a menu, and then you can make the player allocate that. There's also plugins um, that let you allocate, allocate stats. Yanfly just released one not too long ago. I can pull that one up for you real quick too. Easy, easy. Yanfly.mo. Um, search for, um, what, what is it called? Allocation? Stat allocation. Here it is, right? So you've got this, boom. I'm gonna throw this one at you too, Ahmed, if you wanna do stat allocation like this. SRD has one too, but it has a critical flaw. A couple of other people have the same plugin. It has a critical flaw. It's not the plugin developer's fault. It's just the way that the engine is interpreting the code. And it's, I don't really even understand how it gets around it, but Yanfly does, and Yanfly fixed it, so. So you've got that. Let's put this in the live chat. Boom, there's another link for you, Ahmed. Hopefully one of those two plugins helps you find a solution to your problem and make your system work. Tim Roth says, hi, I may not, I may just not see the obvious, but how can I know what plugins will work with 1.6.1? I used to use 1.5.1 before I took a break from it. Well, the best way is to download one plugin at a time with the sets of plugins you're using and put it in the game and test everything, run through the game. Does it break anything? If it does, then you know it doesn't work. If it doesn't, then it might work. Maybe. There's no easy way to figure this out. Half of the plugins that were created before 1.5 and 1.6 um, don't work anymore. Chances are, if it worked in 1.5, it will probably work in 1.6 um, with maybe a tooltip error at one point because they removed some things from Pixie, but not a lot really. So if you used 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 uh, and then you're trying to, to put those plugins in 1.5, you're gonna have a lot of problems most likely. But if you used 1.5 and now you're using 1.6, a lot of plugins will still work um, post 1.5.1. So Tim Ross, the, the way to do it is just throw one in and see if it works, and if not, take it out and try another one. Okay, catching up, we're, we're knocking stuff out, hold on. Amos says, hear me out, how about using a day-night cycle? You can opt to explore the cemetery at night, more dangerous, but more rewards. I really don't want to do day-night system. It's not that it's hard, it's not that hard, and then plus there's plugins that'll do it for you. I just don't like how it looks when everything's dark. Um, only if you, if I can custom design the level of shading, the level of darkness with Terax lighting, so I just don't want to do that. If I make a dark map, it's because it's supposed to be dark. I don't want it to have where these bright maps are dark, because then if you go into a cave, it's dark, and every map seems very dark, and it just pulls from the, the soul of the game. Going Savage, I downloaded Rim World, and I need to get back. Oh yeah, I, you're gonna your your product your productivity is going to suffer <laughs> uh, if you download Rim World for sure because that's a fantastic game. What about leveling up equipment? What about it, Flash? You can do that. I don't see a problem with that. I made a system earlier, but the problem I didn't like about it was I made it very menu based. But you could use picture common events and do it that way. So leveling up equipment, not hard. You can do it multiple ways. If you get more specific with a question, I can help you with an answer. Remember, you have to ask him to work for the right C's plugins. Really? You do. Um, yeah, with any plugin creator, check their terms of, of use to see if you can actually use it in a commercial work. Yeah, Hemi Works plugins, she was real big in 2015, 2016. Uh, I didn't really see much in 2017 uh, or 2018 from Hemi. It's unfortunate. Please come back, Hemi. Come back, come back to the, to the RPG Maker scene. Can you create an RPG where you can only gain experience by eating? Why not, Ahmed? You could, right? Rin says I used to use the SRD stat boost. Yeah, but the problem with that is if you switch class, 
you get your stat points, but they stay there. And so you can just allocate them, switch class, allocate them, switch class, allocate them. In some manner, it can be exploited. There are plenty of ways you can use that plugin and not let the player exploit it, but if you're trying to let them change class, you'll have a problem. Okay, still fielding questions. Um, Ren also answers on it. Do you mean the plugin apocalypse? Yeah, when it when things get, went to 1.5.1, 1. it was an apocalypse. But they fixed it, and 1.5.1, 1. I recommend now using 1.6.1 1. because I mean things work. It's been more optimized. Uh, it's, it seems good. I haven't found any critical problems with it. The engine still will lag at some point and not handle particles very well and Pixie engine isn't the most friendly, but like it's not it's not the worst either. It's still for a small like for for what it is, it takes a lot of system resources. You have to have a pretty nice computer to even run things correctly. Which you would think it'd be more optimized. But it still works. Can you please show me a little bit of the game? I always see the development, but no gameplay. Jumbo, Quambo, I do need to just run through for beta testing as I normally do. So how about we do that for you? I, I think I've caught up. Um, yeah, let me just start at the, the opening scene and I'll just do a, a last minute beta test run through. So we're gonna start the player here with uh, in the system. We're gonna start transparent and we're gonna just do a placeholder guy that we take out when the player selects if they're boy, girl, or toaster. And, yeah. By the way, how, how's it going, Jumbo? How's your project coming along? We put the preloader core in today. It fixed the face bug. We're skipping the title screen, and we're using a parallel process using is um, triggered to see if we press up or down so that if I press up and hold it, it doesn't just go and spam super crazy. Um, we've got a clicky sound effect that plays and I recorded that myself in Audacity using this right here. So that's that sound effect we have right here. Um, an animation um, we created and a, a sprite that we created in, in a sprite, the arrow, the animated sprite. So we're using four events to determine where we're at in switches and variables. We're actually drawing, uh, we're, we're using the background to show this and then we're drawing pictures. We're drawing one, two, three, four, and then this, this board. So we're drawing five pictures and then we're using Yanfly's, um, let me hit F10 and show you. We're actually using doodads to, to show the white color, like the highlights, right? Um, so we can edit doodads and you can see we have nine doodads what's going on oh it's actually when I'm trying to use the, the, the key presses in here it's, it's using doodads as well so that's a problem the player won't have this problem uh, because when the game is executed you won't be able to bring up the doodads menu so that's fine let's hear it let's just restart the game So we're using doodads to um, to show the highlights and the names, actually, yeah. So the black background and the white background, the white foreground where all the text is, is doodads. And the black ones are there, drawn by default, and the white ones are there um, when a, a variable is set right and the switch is on. So these require a switch to be on. And the switch is turned with an auto run event. So as I push down, it's turning off the other switch and, and turning on a switch. And if I press down, it's turning off like the switch that controls the white one here and turns on that one. So that's how I'm doing this menu. And if I press enter, it's also checking with the parallel process. So we can look at the credits and the credits control us and, and just scroll over and over and over. That's not intended. I have a little bit of a wait there. So the player has a, a moment to let go of the enter button options in here. And I need to remove this burp toggle, it doesn't work. So I was messing around with that. I like these. this menu, it looks very nice. Um, I don't know how to add my own commands to it. So that's something I'll have to figure out. Cause I try, I mean, I can obviously add my own things here, but this isn't toggling the switch like I want it to. 
It seems like it'd be very easy, but it's not. Um, someone make a tutorial on that. Anyway, you could load game or we could do a new game. We start a new game. The player is uh, asked to be boy, girl, or toaster. And you can use the keyboard to press backspace and name your toaster man. And then we got custom animations, custom sound effects. We have a little opening event with Jinx in here. Jinx talks to us, um, saying that, hey, you're the new mayor, like it or not, you're gonna be the mayor of the town. I have a little mini piano game that you can play right here. enchanting system but we have to go unlock it real quick we also have a way to process foods but we have to um, grow them first well actually we started with some so we can like say we process the fresh carrot and then we create chopped carrots and the chopped carrots does stuff we have uh, several states that are created from items like if you eat the food so this is gonna be the tutorial event here where you walk up and you talk to Teddy and Teddy gives you lots of information. We'll expand upon this as we, you know, as we get farther in the game. How do we turn the, the burp sound? So since it didn't work in the menu, I let the player turn on or off the burp noises here. So I just turned them on. So if I press E, it should have turned them on. How do I turn off? Uh, turn on the burp noises. Okay, no more questions. It doesn't actually work. Why is that not working? One second. Sorry, I know you wanted to see the gameplay, um, but I'll forget about that, and and uh, I don't want to forget about it because this is a very simple fix, probably. When the player says something, something burp sound effects. If turn on, then we turn on the burp toggle, okay? And then when the player presses E on the common events. player should be able to consume food, E hotkey, if burp toggle, wait, did, why did I do that, why didn't I just go like switch burp toggle, okay, let's go like this, this is why it didn't work, but now if burp toggle is on, it'll do the belly burp, and if, otherwise it'll do the apple bite, I probably changed it for um, when you use the item, Consume food right here. If burp toggle is on, then do that. Okay, so now it'll work. I just gotta test this real quick. Not a big deal, not a big deal. Um, we can pick a different thing, we'll pick Edmund. And there's an Easter egg in there. If you name Edmund Driftwood, you get a special item. It doesn't change the game, it's completely like a just a joke item, you know, flavor item, Easter egg. If you you get an extra show text, and you get a piece of wood, and if you actually eat the wood, it says game over question mark, and then there's a three second pause, and then if you say yep, GG, bro, it will in the game, but if you say any of these other two things, it just like closes it, and that's all that happens. It gets it out of your inventory, so it doesn't just log up the inventory. We'll go through this a bit. I want to make sure that the burp toggle works. When you press E or use an item. Um, it fills up your hunger bar. You learn about the hunger bar here. Um, this is your hunger bar. I know they look like brown colored cotton candy, but they're supposed to be meat. So we can ask Teddy about um, the icons. Uh, it talks about the hunger system so the player knows. The snot snot sounds, custom sound effects, uh, burp sound effects. Right now they're off, so we'll see if we keep them off. If we press E, we hear that, and then you eat. It sounds like an apple. You're biting into an apple. But if we go here, burp sound effects, turn them on. Uh, then we go here and we eat it. It should go. Yeah, that's that burp sound effect. You can also just eat food rations here. The same thing happens, but it stops the player from having to go through the menu. I always want to remove as many menus as possible. Uh, this was a little, another Easter egg shaking up baby. This was a mushri thing. I don't even understand the reference, but um, 
But yeah, it's there for our resident troll. You get shook water. It's, I guess it's better. Mushri, how is it? How is shook water better? Can you explain to us? You can go to these um, vending machines. I made this animation for the little sparkle effect, and then we put it there for uh, to show that it's something. I made this guy an ace sprite. Let me show you my special move. You say, please don't. Nothing happens. But if uh, you if you let him show his special move, he goes, uh, 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 and then. And you do it too and uh, he's like whoa excellent job take this as a reward I made it myself and he gives you strange liquid don't ask how he made the strange liquid if it had anything to do with uh, monk pack Hodge's uh, sound effect maybe it did maybe it didn't you have guys that give you information about like here in the cemetery if you die she's going uh, in the cemetery you don't game over but um, if you kill stuff you get necronite if you lose you, you'll awaken in your town uh, in your house and the witch will take 10% of your gold this is just a little so the player knows like more about the systems and then we have a few tropey NPCs like the monsters are becoming more increasing as of late like every every trope every RPG needs this this guy this girl to say to say that all of the books tell you something like you can change the name of your town um, in the areas you can purchase automatically generate items you have to have the stuff for those things some of the businesses is that spelled right businesses I think I spelled businesses wrong Hold on. Discord is an auto correct. Businesses. Did I spell that right? Businesses. Nope, that's correct. Okay, so I did it right. Anyway, this is a good way to plug my Discord there as an auto correct thing. Uh, links in the description below if you want to join the Discord. Um, your houses and the towns can receive many upgrades and additional features that are not available at the beginning of the game. This let the player know that there's things that you can get that are not in the game. We have a little map here so we can see the players, we can see the world map from here if we want to. And we can press escape to get out of that. We're going to do something with this like a storage or like a drop off point. I don't know. Uh, we've got Ikumin hit, uh, hidden here on the board. Do you like dinosaurs? He likes dinosaurs. Uh, you can take the skeleton's bones if you want to. We're going to have somebody um, take the bone back from you. Um, when you walk up past a certain point, if you have the bone, he's going to take the bone back from you, and, and then he's going to walk over here and put it back where it goes. So you can repeat that. It'll be a looping event. Then you have uh, Doc Weez here. He lets you know about the enchanting sy system, and he actually gives you an empower gem and, and starts the switch that lets you uh, unlock the activating system, the the enchanting system. Um, then there's more. All these books will tell you stuff. There's no random encounters, but all the treasure chests inside randomly generated. Dungeons are guarded by enemies, but there are random encounters, so I made a change just because I, ch I made a custom encounter system that, that that doesn't use the game's random encounter system. It uses a, you know, battle processing and a common event that happens when you walk on a region that calls a common event. And more stuff is you proceed deeper into the dungeons, the level of enemies with the guard of the treasure chest also increase, so if you get go down farther, naturally you're going to find harder stuff. The battles are optional in the dungeon, so I may just amend this to say there are no random encounters in the dungeons. And then you can let the player know you can use the bed at any time. Uh, at, we're referencing the name of the town. It's default town for now. But if the player goes, like the one of the other NPCs said, you can actually type in the name of the town and change it. And it'll change it in here because we're referencing an actor name right here. House in. So if I were to call it like um, uh, Dumb Town 1, it'll say the bed at your house in Dumb Town 1 town <laughs> at any time to recover your HP and MP. So that'll remove all the states and stuff. And yeah, as you travel across the world, you'll see several locations that you can claim for a price. Claim of these will, you know, require stuff. I'm going to cheat and walk across here. This is not passable. I was holding the uh, control button to walk. When you're in playtest mode, holding the control button will let you walk across your maps as if it was all passable. So in the game, these are not passable. You can see I'm trying to walk through. But if I hold the control, I can just cheat my way across. This is to save time. Flash 15,000. How do you get a special appearance? Uh, just be in the chat at the right time when I'm making characters and you will get a character for sure. Um, you can claim um, things on the map by purchasing them, but they will require things like that requires hay to run. So it started and stopped right here, build the quarry. We need to change the player sprite size back. I'm sorry, I have to fix this bug real quick. Um, I changed them because I thought it was causing a problem not showing faces. That, ha tended, that, that actually was not the problem. Uh, so we fixed the bug that caused um, 
the change actor images not to work. So I made a switch that instead of deleting the event, I just made it require a switch be turned on. And um, we've already changed, we, we have fixed it now with uh, SRD's plugin, the preloader court, just completely fixed it. So um, we can actually turn this thing off. We're gonna require, we're gonna get rid of the requirement that um, that switch be on. So it will change actor images and make admin into the little mini admin. Um, this is using Yadfly's scale sprite plugin. So it changes the sprite to a little mini sprite or make it bigger, larger, you just change the size. So if we get, uh, if we selected the, um, the, the guy, then it'll make him the small version of you selected the girl. It'll make her the small version of it, 16 by 24. Their regular size is 24 by 48. Um, they're, they're normally, no wait, the regular size is 48 by 72. They're normally 48 by 48 chibi, but I've stretched them out and reduced the head size in Photoshop using a trick that Royal Crown Code has showed us. So we turned that back on. So uh, what happens now, we can quickly get to this point to show you the difference. The reason why it looks glitchy if our face is up here because we're not supposed to be this size. Um, sorry, real quick, but I'll show you the female sprite while we're doing this. So new game, real quick. We can skip through all this very quickly. The girl, Mars, another Easter egg. If you put this as T, then uh, you get an Easter egg saying uh, you get this mask. I have another sprite for that mask. I'm going to add that in at some point. I just can't remember where it is. I downloaded it, somebody sent it to me, and I feel awful because I can't remember who sent me this really, really nice resource. Whoever sent me the other face sprite, let me know. Just just pop in Discord and be like, uh, I sent you that sprite, and then I can scroll up. And I, I look through, but I need to look through more. Th this one was made by Silver Starlight, but we also have another one. Maybe we'll all throw both of them, and the player can switch. Wait, what did I do? You showed me how to resize the sprites with a... Uh, you showed me how to code in... Uh, in Photoshop that will like basically make a macro so I press play and it takes the, the the sprite do you remember doing that I was explaining how you're the one who showed us how to do that you see how we have the little version now the little sprite so if we walk up here it doesn't look all jank at all it looks perfectly fine because we're on the world map so we can't run and we have a tiny sprite to illustrate the size of everything else around us go here and purchase the docks of course we need fishing poles uh, to do this and I think I started with the player with some fishing poles so it's, it's continuing to run and as we claim resource nodes um, we generate items and resources and I forgot to disable we can leave it running though uh, I need to also enable the the sprite change event inside the town so we'll just get rid of the switch that requires so that this actually auto runs and if we've selected this it puts us back to the regular sprites which is the 48 by 72 version so that when we walk in town we won't be this little tiny version of ourselves uh, it'll be the the actual size but what we're talking about renaming the town you can rename the town here this is using a dreadwing plug dreadwing plugin for the keyboard so i can put it like i don't have to go through and and go like uh, a b this is r whatever you can just press delete and use the keyboard to type in uh, name of town here we have a custom merchant so he sells different stuff every minute his wares will change so he's selling these six things now he will always sell a food ration because you can starve and gg you will die if you leave the game and if you run out of food that's the one lose condition uh, inactivity or um, not seeing it but I did even do an audio notification so that when you get down to one bar you'll hear me say your character is starving uh, to let you know that you need to eat the food rations uh, we've got a lot of cameos from people who hang out in the chat uh, this is vapor vapor made the battle toaster sprite so big shout out to vapor and um, wanted to be the seed vendor so vapor is the seed vendor and we have a custom let's actually show that off over here you can get like seeds here and go to your plots. You have a little mini farming system. And you can go to the plots and plant your seeds down here. Let's take uh, strawberry seeds and put the strawberry seeds here. Plant the seeds. I want to take this out of a menu based thing and make it more picture based. So we could maybe do something like that too. It'll right, take an overhaul. Put carrot seeds down. cabbage seeds um, 
as say potatoes. And then these will start growing over time. So it, you'll also be able to check in on them and see the percentage that they're done. Uh, right now they're 24% and you can see as they get farther along, you get to see that they change, the image will change. You see their little tiny sprouts are coming up out of the dirt. It's hard to tell, but if you look close, you can see little green sprouts. And this one, these now these popped up. You'll see pretty soon that these will also pop up and then these will pop up. And then they'll change to another version where you have like a, um, a longer, you'll see more of the, the plant coming out of the ground. Uh, over time, you can check on them to see the percentage. As it gets to about 50%, it should uh, change the image as well. Maybe it's 75%. You can uh, do other stuff while they're growing. You don't have to watch your plants grow. Uh, we can buy apple trees and orange trees, and uh, it's going to produce fruit for us just passively every three minutes while we're doing other stuff. Time stops while you're in the menu and time stops while you're in a battle. But other than that, time keeps going on all of the plants. When these start getting, I think 75%, they switch. When do they switch? Yeah, 75%. Now you can see that the sprouts are coming up a little bit more, a little bit more, and these will come up next, and so forth and so on. And you can leave the map and come back, and they're still gonna be growing. How do that work? What do you mean? Be specific, I'm going over a lot of stuff. Do you remember when I thought that destroying the player's house if they spent too much time on the menu? Yeah, I'm not doing that, Lucian. We are using Olivia's battle system. This is the level nine enemy we just created. The trickster imp. So I'll show you the battle system a little bit. Yeah, the mouse is locking it. Got confused there. So the confusion is a custom code that Damien Floyd gave me. I think he got some version of Yanfly's code. And uh, it lets you have a chance to normal attack, but you might also just get a confusion attack and you can end up attacking someone else. Some matics, uh, some matics, <laughs> some matics. Some maps will be um, automatically like, uh, not generated, but like, it will pick from a pool of, of maps. And uh, I'll, I'll show you the system right now, but first we're, I'm gonna show you the maps that are just static. They will be this way at all times. Like, these two maps will be the same. This is where you come and rescue uh, another cameo. This is Devin Scott, uh, supporter of the channel, good guy, game developer. We rescue Devin Scott, and he becomes the town's tinker. He unlocks the crafting menu. So we're using Yan Flies. Before you find him, this synthesis will not appear on the menu, but after you find and rescue him, he puts a town up. He puts a house in the town, and also unlocks this from the menu, so you can craft things. I started the player with some items so that we can craft these things. You craft these things. You craft armors and items. A lot of these uh, images we we've, we've created ourselves. Do each of the spots of farmland, do they get their own variable made for them? Yes, they do, Flash. That's actually, I think, two episodes I'm, I used. So like four hours to craft the entire system. There's, there's several variables. I think there are three variables for each plot and a switch. But now we can harvest these. Harvest the strawberry, and then some shared variables too, like the percentage and stuff. You can harvest those crops, and we get items. It's a random number, which is another variable. It's a random number. We 
between two and five, I think. And for these eight plots, it's actually 16 events and a com and 16 common events. Or no, yeah, 16 common events. No, eight common events and 16 events. Up here on this little um, ledge, there's eight events. And they get moved when you start planting something. Like for example, if I put potato seed right here, an event that was over here in this corner gets moved on top of the event that's right here. It kind of takes over as the thing that's that's running. And it's controlling a, a, a global variable, it's going, a game variable that's being incremented every frame of the game. So every second that goes up by 60, so we can set how long we want it to last. And then we can also do math to determine, well, the full process will take this many frames. <clears throat> this many frames have passed, so mathematically we can do an equation and throw a percent sign at the end of it and say that this is now this percent of the way done. The player can know how far along their plants have gone. The player also gets experience for, for growing crops, which will also make the player gain experience for other tasks as well. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> but anyway, there's also a blacksmith here that I've made rather hard to find and get. He he's oh, let's show the last one of the last things I want to show before we end the stream. The random dungeon thing. So you have to craft uh, an item called the keystone. Level one keystone is all we have right now. But we start with the level. Where's it at? It's a key item. Every time you enter this map, I'm giving myself one as like a dev cheat, but you'll have to craft it when you actually play the game. And you take the keystone here and you can use it. You use the keystone and it puts you in one of like 20 different maps. And it sets a variable. We gotta get our food back up. We're gonna starve. So there's no random encounters on these maps, so the player can wander around as much as they want, but if they find the treasure chests, they have to fight the guards, right? So they, you open up the treasure chest and it spawns a level 1 creature for the first level because you put in a level 1 uh, keystone. And since we're level 9 or level 10 right now, it's easy to smash these, but you... Um, you, you, when you loot a box, you get a random loot. So we got a, another keystone, but it could have been like any of like 50 different items. So we walk around the map. This is another Easter egg. That's T going, Meh! and then I pitch shifted it like 20 times. It's the stuff of nightmares. Exactly what it needs to be. There's also a little uh, collectible. You can, if you find all the pixie dust, something's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen yet, but um, we'll make some system. Chest is guarded by enemies. We'll open the chest, and it, it's another level one creature. It'll be level one until we go to the next level. And we smash the enemy very easily since we started at a high level. The player will start at level one, though. And you get a random loot. This time it was Bolt the Cloth. When you leave this dungeon, you come back. The switches are reset, so this you can get this chest again. Um, you find the way out. Let's just find the way out. And when you go to the next, when you go to the exit, you can either proceed to the next level, going down to level two creatures, or you can leave the dungeon, or you can say not right now, and it just puts you back. Right. So let's say proceed to the next level. It takes you to the next level, and now it picks from those same twenty. You could actually get the same map again because it's picking from a pool of those 20 maps or so. Uh, most of these maps were made by Cry's History. Thank you so much, Cry's. Now when you open the chest, you're gonna be fighting level two creatures, but you still have a, a chance at that random uh, loot. The time we got granite, which is a good find, because granite's like a thousand points. There's chests hidden all over. Proceed to the next level. I just wanna show you some of the maps as we go along. Now we're in the level three, another Easter egg creature. I might make some of these creatures do stuff later on. Mm -hmm. 
and every creature we fight has three drop items, a common drop that drops 50% of the time, an uncommon drop that drops 10% of the time, and a rare drop that drops 1% of the time, one out of 100. See to the next level. When am I gonna give out a demo? Not for a while. It's got so much work to do. It's not even close, really. The more I put into it, the more like I see it being and don't want to just throw it out there until I'm like really happy with it and comfortable with it. It's currently an alpha, really. It's not open alpha. It's not like a multiplayer game. It's not going to be... You have to wait a while. I'm not going to just uh, give this out. This is going to be a Steam release. I plan to sell this game. So, um... They might, there might be a, a small beta. Not an open beta. There might be a small beta. Most certainly there probably will be. I do most of my own beta testing, but I, I do like other people playing as well. That helps a tremendous amount. Because you get people's opinions and you get to find bugs that you never encountered on other systems. So there may be um, some beta keys given out. But that's a long way in the future. I originally thought, like, oh, I want to have this out for 2019. Uh, I want this to be out in 2019. Um, and I thought it would be, like, early 2019. But it's probably going to be mid to late 2019. <laughs> Dibs on beta tester. we get to the highest level which was eight I don't know if I updated it after we made the ninth level creature so that reminds me I need to update the uh, random battle in uh, not random battle the the call loot one where did I put that here we go if dungeon level is greater than equal to 10 then set it to 1 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 we need to copy this paste this again and change this for when the variable gets to level 8 we start a battle with the Chimerico and oh, I changed the wrong one thanks spider this one is the Chimerico. And then we copy this again, and we paste it, and we change for when the battle starts. When the dungeon level is 9, then we are going to get into a battle with the Trickster Imp. And then if it gets to 10, reset it back to 1 for now. And as we add more creatures, we'll expand upon how far we can delve into the dungeon. And, and get random fights. And not not random fights. We can get specific next tier, level 7, level 8, level 9, level 10, when we create the 10th creature. And I think we... I talked about in uh, one of the earlier streams, maybe a couple days ago, maybe this Monday, where I want to have one boss battle for every, like, 9 or 10 creatures. So I think we'll have creatures 1 through nine be normal creatures and the 10th creature be the boss of that uh, rank and then 11 to 20 will be the next tier of creatures new keystone with new maps and then they'll have a boss for that uh, at level 20 and then 21 to 30 so forth and so on depending on how far we get I don't expect to have like a hundred enemies but hopefully we get to like 50 enemies in like five bosses and maybe some extra super bosses optional super bosses Obviously, we need to keep our scope low, so it might even be less than that. We can just keep proceeding to the next level, getting to the higher levels. Right now, it's only going to go to 7 and restart, because that's what it was. But yeah, so it restarted instead of going to 8th level. But that's pretty much where the game's at right now. Guys, thank you so much for coming to the live stream. I really appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up if you like to subscribe to the channel. If you are new here, if you like what I do on this channel, please consider uh, backing me on patreon.com slash gaming. Volpe says, I feel like a 1% drop is way too little. Well, I don't. I think that since we are already giving a 50% drop and a 10% drop, the 1% is your Skinner box, right? The 1% is like 
the reason to continue to do it if you already have played for more than a few hours, right? And you get very powerful things for that 1% chance. Now, if the enemy only had a 1% chance to drop and that's the only thing they ever dropped, I agree with you, Bulfy. But I put into place two other drops. So the enemies have a 50% chance to drop their common item, a 10% chance to drop a uncommon item, and then the 1% chance to drop a relic. Right? The Haunting Memory Soul Stone for this creature, the level 1 creature, when you get that 1% drop, you can equip it as a relic and you learn all of the skills that that enemy has. Like a blue mage, right? But you're not having to learn the skills, you just have to select which enemy you're replicating. Um, if you get the 1% drop from like the, um, the Tunnel Rat, then when you equip it, the player is going to learn the Tunnel Rat's moves. This player is going to know how to do Bite, Dirty Bite, and Dig. And all of the enemies have custom uh, skills. They don't have no default attack. They all have custom basic attack, a custom special tech move, and a custom special ability point move, right? They all have custom battlers. I'm using Amplice Animated SV Enemies, and the battlers that I'm using are available on the forums, RPGMakerWeb.com. Um, they are by Hidden Ones. That's right. Plugins from Yanfly. Plugins from uh, Dreadwing. One of the plugins for myself. SRD, Olivia's plugins, Mr. T's plugin, Tarax Lighting, Yami's plugin. And, you know, it's coming along very nice. I really, really like the progress we've made. Custom farming system, custom, like, simulation type system. Um, Integration with the live chat so you guys become characters in the game if you want that <sighs> A lot of stuff we fixed bugs today. We smashed a lot of teleport transfer event bugs. We didn't get them all We need more transfer event testing in the graveyard We incorporated a new system that lets the player taunt the, the spirits if they want to grind We reduced our custom random encounter system rate so that it's between a hundred and two hundred steps Thank you guys for coming. We'll see you guys next time. I stream 10 to noon Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to come hang out when we're not streaming, the link for the Discord is in the description below. Follow me on twitch.tv slash driftwoodgaming for future ideas. We're going to do restream.io. I've been looking at it. So when I stream on uh, YouTube Live, I'll also be streaming on Twitch sometime the next month or so when I get around to setting it up. It's not hard. It's just lazy. There's a lot of stuff to do. You bet, Sleepy. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Rin Phoenix, thanks for the million dollar super chat. Flash 15K, appreciate it. John Papas says, You're awesome. I hope your game goes well. Thank you so much. I appreciate the well wishing. Mushri, our resident troll, thank you for coming. Doc Wees, always a pleasure. Uh, I'll miss names. Royal, you're awesome. Ahmed, you always have good uh, questions and insight and. Lots of good comments. I really appreciate you, Ahmed. Tim Ross, thanks for, for uh, stopping in. Hopefully you're still here and you saw the little run through. Blue ones. Yep, they did make an update to kill a bunch of plugins. Drifty should open the save menu after every return from the mine. Well, here's the thing, Royal. You don't actually, even if you die in the mines, you don't game over. It takes you back to the beginning of the mines and that's it. So I could penalize the player by taking 10% of their gold or something like that, but you don't actually, uh, you don't actually game over. So I don't need to force a save and, and uh, put more menus, but that's not a bad idea because what if the game crashes? Saving would be a good thing because, you know, that would stop you. I haven't seen it crash at all ever, which is good. Except when we're testing, like, script calls that I'm just guessing syntax on. But anyway, guys, I gotta go. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Thumbs up. See you. See you. And for those of you who stick around for the ASMR...